Right now on the Will Wheaton Project, as Apocalypse News, one man's passion for sci-fi just might save us all from Wolverine's excessive X-Men press. <laughs> the Walking Dead makeover no one asked for. See that? And burning hot sex in Salem. She will show us the witch. Now, the only man who can make sense of all this, Will Wheaton. And it says so right in the title. And some of you younger viewers may know me as that guy from that poster over your aunt's bed. Uh, aunts around the world and uncles, maybe it's time to take the poster down. It's a little weird, I can see through them. Here at the Will Wheaton Project, we are going to bring you everything science fiction, fantasy, and horror from this past week. And I do mean everything. Because who's gonna stop us? Our network? <laughs> They're too busy trying to figure out how to combine a shark and an earthquake. <laughs> So let's get started before they realize what they've done. <laughs> the movie X-Men made over $200 million worldwide this weekend, and that's before you count the millions they made in product tie-ins, including Carl's Jr., Axe Body Spray, and of course, X-Men Days of Future Pabst. <laughs> The massive success wasn't a surprise, but what was a surprise was this interviewer's request of Hugh Jackman. I know a lot of people are going to ask you about the plot of the film. Mm -hmm. Could you potentially sing us the plot of the film? <laughs> <laughs> oh God, lady, no, 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 do not open that door! Wolverine comes to the rescue. He's sent back in the past. I play the Wolfman, yes, it's quite the task. In X-Men, days of future past, there's the plug. Hail to the concrete heroes, hail, to hail. To the Wolverines are gonna come out on May 23rd. Good like a ball of peas and I don't keep all the Hugh Jackman was last seen wandering the Gobi Desert singing about X-Men to cacti. <laughs> making the rounds to promote X-Men. Sean Ashmore, who plays Iceman, gave us an intimate look inside the mind of a mutant. I secretly hate the little princess from the movie Frozen who stole the idea of a hero turning things to ice. She's a little bitch. <laughs> Sean Ashmore, let it go. <laughs> There was no new Game of Thrones this week, but news leaked that HBO is casting new characters for season five. Using my extensive Hollywood connections, which is not a thing I made up, I obtained a list of the characters, which I will reveal to you here right now exclusively on our first show. We will start with Fanria the Excessively Nude. Hodor's cousin Frodor the Giant Hobbit. Of course, there's Drogonorea. <laughs> He's a dragon, and it doesn't just burn when he breathes fire. <laughs> and of course, Jim, the judgmental guy who's only read the books. <laughs> We all have a gym in our lives. <laughs> Showtime's horror thriller Penny Dreadful takes all your favorite monsters and puts them in one show. This week, we saw their late night cable take on the birth of Frankenstein's monster. <laughs> that it was a difficult birth. This was abomination. It is so great to see Billy Corrigan back on TV. <laughs> sounded this good in years. <laughs> Kids, it's graduation season, and Puff Daddy's commencement address at Howard University is the speech I've been waiting to hear my whole life. I want you to remember the power of you. You gotta feel that power. You gotta believe in that power. You have that power, trust me. At night, I be flying. I believe I can fly. I am a unicorn. You are a unicorn. We are unicorns. You're a unicorn, and you're a unicorn. You're all unicorns. Drowning in student debt. 
that. <laughs> I think that's actually the same speech he gave at Hogwarts. <laughs> I'd like to take a moment right now to tell you how happy I am to not only be hosting, but imagining greater. Right here on Sci-Fi. <laughs> Science fiction is full of legendary storytellers who dared to dream of the unknown. From Homer to Jules Verne to George Lucas, I've been instructed to inform you that Sci-Fi is carrying on their legacy with innovative programming sure to inspire generations to come. Which is why I am honored to present this week's Sci-Fi Showcase. Enjoy. Feeds me taste so good. I'm gonna go get yelled at. We'll be right back. Stay tuned for walkers like you've never seen them before, and a mystery celebrity guest that will blow your mind. When the Will Wheaton Project continues. And now, exploring the cosmos with Neil deGrasse Tyson, drunk. <laughs> show and I wanted to take a moment and talk from the heart but mostly out of my mouth <laughs> when sci-fi first reached out to me to do a show oh here I, it comes um <clears throat> as I was saying um I don't think of this as my show rather this is our show the all I'm one of you classic Wheaton <laughs> what is going on blah 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 <laughs> And do I really sound like that? Oh my God, what a surprise, Mr. Will Wheaton, everyone! This is so great! So good to have you here, yeah. It doesn't make any sense. How is this a surprise? This is my show. Well, <laughs> technically, it's my show. You know, Sci-Fi was so impressed by my Walking Dead after show, The Talking Dead, that they hired me to do the first ever during show, The Talking the Will Wheaton Project. So, welcome to the I'm still really confused. All right, well, just hold that thought. Later, Will was very confused by the existence of my show, even when I explained it to him like he was a child. Check out this clip. I am still really confused. Hilarious! This guy on my right! Look at this guy! Okay, stop! Stop! Why is Sci-Fi doing this? Yeah, yeah. Doing yeah. This? Uh, stop doing the whole bit. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> Why is Sci-Fi doing this? Well, it makes perfect sense. I mean, they want your show to be a big hit on the internet, like my show at midnight, which is on every night at midnight. Um, are you familiar with the internet? It's like a bunch of giant tubes filled with cats. Are and you hate. serious? <laughs> yeah. I am like Mr. Internet. <laughs> no, it's adorable that you think that. I, I've actually been Mr. Internet for the past six years, so I don't think that's true. <laughs> Mr. Internet Award is an honor bestowed by Nerdist Industries. <laughs> Talk about rigged. Well, then I think I know one little angry Anson who won't be winning it next year. You know, you should damn it. really consider using the internet to help promote your show. You know what works great? I find that hashtag wars work. Like, a good hashtag like, I don't know, like Poop Wheaton, huh? Let's see what we got. There they go. Points, 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 points. points. No, that's all. Oh, Chris. Points, beard points. Oh. I'll take the beard points. <laughs> I appreciate what you're doing here, kind of. But I think I got this. All right, well, you know, just trying to help out because you're my buddy and I want your show to do well and everything because I love you. Whatever. Yeah, I'm the jerk. Yeah, I'm the jerk. Oh, thanks, man. It's okay. Look, um, I'll tell you what. Why don't, why don't we set up this next bit? What? Together? Let's do it together. Come on. All right, Tom. Yay, okay. Yeah, 
the day, every television show featured an iconic theme that kind of explained the entire show to the first-time viewers. So as a public service, we found the people that made those classic theme songs and hired them to make a brand new theme for a contemporary show that we think really needs one. Check it out! <laughs> to talk a little more in depth about the things that matter to me. This segment is called Will's Memo. <laughs> Summer's here, the time of year where we learn the hello. It's a lovely surfboard. The time of year where we learn the fate of our favorite TV shows and other shows that were on television. First off, Dracula has been canceled. Oh. Right? <laughs> How do you screw up Dracula? Dracula is an immortal, bloodthirsty, sex-crazed inventor who... What? Whoa, what? Inventor? What Thomas Edison dismissed as mere fantasy, I give to you. Safe. Wireless. Power. to light your bulbs. <laughs> Joining Dracula on the canceled list, believe once upon a time in Wonderland, the Tomorrow People, almost human, which didn't even get a chance, Starcross, nobody saw that coming, Intelligence, and of course, they pulled the plug on Revolution. <laughs> I saw more survivors at the Red Wedding. <laughs> but it wasn't all bad news. WGN Salem was picked up after only three episodes. Personally, I think a lot of Salem's success has to be credited to their unusually blunt promos. Welcome to Salem, the little town that's got everything. Witches, murder, power, desire, temptation, lust. It's all here on network television. Salem. Somehow, you convince yourself you're about to see boobs, but you won't. Or maybe you might. You won't. Or will you? No. WGN, for people who don't know about the internet. <laughs> to learn more about boobs on the internet, check my browser history. <laughs> I don't know how they got into my office to take that picture. <laughs> also returning is the History Channel's Vikings, because clearly history did whatever it took to get ratings. Check it out. May I present Old Ragnar Lothbrook. You may leave us. Will you not join me, Ragnar Lothbrook?
treasure. We here at the Will Breeden Project do solemnly swear to put Funky's 70s porn music under as many clips as possible from now until the heat death of the universe because they make everything better. We do have a few new shows to look forward to. Uh, this week, NBC's Crossbones premieres with movie star John Malkovich as Blackbeard. It is the role of a lifetime and Malkovich could not be more excited to conquer television. Edward Teach, who who was the notorious, supposedly the name, although in fact that's disputed somewhat, <laughs> of the notorious pirate Blackbeard. Um, this summer on NBC. The show will focus on Blackbeard's tragic struggle with narcolepsy. <laughs> and by the way, you think we could put some more b behind Malkovich? <laughs> <laughs> Looking forward, he was like, I really have to tone things down. There's a lot going on behind me. <laughs> Looking forward to the fall. One of the most anticipated shows has got to be Gotham, which will focus on all the stuff in Gotham City that isn't Batman. <laughs> like what, their thriving art scene? <laughs> Have you ever been to Gotham? <laughs> it's actually all about young Bruce Wayne long before he became Batman. And I was surprised by some of the Batman canon they decided to include. a Batman movie, I always think to myself, forget the superheroes, I just want to watch a regular kid be sad. <laughs> we'll be right back. And now, exploring the cosmos with Neil deGrasse Tyson, Stone. Can you see me? Can you hear me? This has been Exploring the Cosmos with Neil deGrasse Tyson. Stone. Welcome back. Let's take a moment to acknowledge the people who made this week so incredible in a segment I call Shout Outs. Thanks, graphics from the 90s. First off, shout out to the Portuguese Navy for launching their first drone. Which turns out to also be their first submarine. <laughs> Game of Thrones wasn't on this week, but shout out and spoiler alert to last week's surprising and dramatic exit, which deviated slightly from the books. Anyone expecting Littlefinger to do the friendship move clearly hasn't been paying attention. <laughs> Shout out to John Malkovich still selling the hell out of crossbones. It's great, especially for a pirate thing. Crossbones, this summer on NBC. <laughs> And finally, a shout out to Starcrossed for failing a lot of things, but primarily to fundamentally understand how walkie talkies work. The tracks built a bomb. I don't know what they're planning, but I can tell you where to find it. You need a response team. I still can't believe that show is canceled. Yes, I can. Well, everybody, that is our first show. Thank you to Sean Ashmore and Chris Hardwick for Outtakes with Chris Hardwick and more from Sean Ashmore. Head
over to Blaster.com. It's on the internet. And finally, thanks to you at home and thanks to you in the audience for being at our first show. One final thing before we go. Now, you might have heard that a movie called The X-Men came out this week, but you don't have to go to a theater to see mutants. There are real mutants living among us, and if you don't believe me, check out this week's Supercut. Until next week, play more games. Woo!